It is happening. It is happening, everybody. The merger is officially confirmed. The merger is officially confirmed. The communities voted yes with a very, very large amount. We'll look at that. We'll talk about it, about a few other news, what that maybe means now for the future of the ASI Alliance. Also, we'll look at other AI news, including Adobe and its integration of different video softwares, maybe in the future. And also, as you all probably know, Bitcoin is taking a large hit, as we also talked about on the last live. So we'll look at that as well. But welcome, everybody. Welcome. I hope you all have a great day and are doing fine. Now let's jump right into it. And let me figure that out, as always. Where do I want to go? Here. All right. Now, let me put myself down here. Well, first of all, yes, yes, the vote is a big yes for Singularity Net, also for Fetch. Last week, we looked at it, and it was about like 82 or 83 percent. This one about 81, I believe. So it went down a little bit, but largely the community said, yes, yes, we want this merger. Yes, we know uh, we maybe have like a little bit of dilution of our token and stuff, but we know, hey, in the long run, this is huge. This is amazing. And we definitely want that. This is hugely bullish. So yeah, congratulations. The vote passed with a huge yes. For Singularity Net, for Fetch AI, it was an even bigger yes, I believe. An even bigger yes. So, yeah, we are all very happy about that. The merger happened. Yay. All right. Now, let's look at the next thing here, which is this post from Fetch AI, where they said, yes, the community has spoken and the merger happened. The proposal uh, has gone through. Now, what does that mean now? What Fetch AI writes is, first, the ASI conversion, which is the most important thing for most of us here, I guess, is scheduled to begin in the coming weeks. So important, the conversion is not live yet. You cannot convert your tokens and you cannot buy the ASI token yet. It is scheduled to happen in the coming weeks. So likely at the end of April or in the beginning of May. Not yet. Everything that you see right now that tells you, hey, buy the ASI token, or hey, this is a merger contract, this is a scam. It's a scam, don't interact with it. Don't interact with it, don't use it, okay? So we'll have to wait a little bit. Always check the official channels for the announcements. Uh, and don't fall for any scams, please. So again, it will happen likely at the end of April in the beginning of May. Oh, by the way, by the way, before I forgot it, forget it, before we move further here, uh, I'll mention it later probably as well, but I created a tutorial video um, for beginners in crypto, right, where I talk about um, C phrase, personal wallet, exchanges, uh, how to use MetaMask, how to be safe in crypto, how to protect yourself against scammers, um, how to make sure you use official links, uh, how to make sure you make uh, right transactions and don't lose all your funds, also how to interact with the market, what to expect, how to take profits, how to make a plan for yourself, um, how to not lose, basically. So yeah, I made that as a beginner's tutorial. If you want to have it, you can find it down in the description. It should be, I believe. It says, get the free crypto beginners course. So maybe that is interesting for some of you. So you might want to go and check that out. But let's move further. Let me make myself small again. All right. What happens next? So yeah, as I said, conversion is scheduled to begin in the coming weeks. Coordination with exchanges to accommodate conversion is also happening. So that means, as I said uh, in multiple videos now, the conversion on the exchanges will happen automatically. You won't have to do anything. The exchanges will just convert that to you and then send you your ASI tokens. But yeah, they will confirm that in the coming weeks, right? As they say right here, as Fetch says right here. So I would definitely keep myself updated on the official channels to search for what is going on with the exchanges, with the specific exchanges and what happens next. You have to be aware that maybe some exchanges say, 
no, this is bullshit. We want, we don't want that token on, on our exchange. I, I don't think so. It's very unlikely, but it might happen. So some exchanges maybe don't adapt the ASI tokens. Uh, and maybe that's the exchange that you are using. So you want to be aware of that. Keep yourself updated on the official channels. I, of course, will also update you on how that looks like with the exchanges. Right now, I would assume that every exchange will uh, convert into ASI. I don't see any logical reason why any exchange should not do that. It just doesn't make any sense. Like this is huge bull hugely bullish. The AI narrative is crazy. Uh, and I think exchanges would just shoot themselves into their own foot if they, if they would not do that. So I would assume it will all be without any issues, but still um, always keep in mind that there might, might be issues. We'll see further down the line. All right, governance vote on network upgrade. Uh, yeah, and network upgrades, rebrands, fetch AI to network to ASI, the fetch AI network to ASI network. As we all know, the Fetch AI network is creating a hard fork into ASI, and the other tokens will migrate to that. Now, I also want to show you before we move into something else, you can now hear on X, and I would highly recommend that you follow this as well. They are not, as I don't have a check mark yet, but this is the official artificial super intelligence alliance X account. Uh, you know that why? Because it's followed by, you know, by Singularity Net, by Ocean Protocol, by Fetch AI. So like this, you can be pretty sure that this is the official account. Uh, if you are not sure, you just uh, go to Singularity Net or Fetch and search for their post where they post this account. Okay, I would recommend you follow that. And while you're on it, I also recommend that you follow me if you're next here at just underscore Philip. I post stuff uh, sometimes about blockchain, sometimes about AI, often about um, subconscious work, um, about um, yeah growth, personal growth, self-development, stuff like that. <laughs> okay, good. All right, how are you all doing, by the way? Are you excited that the merger has finally gone through? I am freaking excited about that. Man, what that means, like this opens up so many opportunities, these three amazing companies merging together, like we've talked about in so many videos. Just imagine, what happens if they put out a model that is just a fraction of uh, uh, gets just a fraction of the users that ChatGPT have? Uh, it will go absolutely through the roof. Uh, and we'll look at the Bitcoin dump and we talk about what that means for the ASI token and uh, look at that in just a moment here. First of all, another thing that I wanted to share with you is um, is this news here from Singular Singularity Net. Singularity Net and Unity join forces. And this is pretty, pretty huge. What is Unity? Um, Unity is basically a capital venture. So they basically give companies, uh, invest in companies, give them money so they can build up build up their portfolio and their, their products. They also help with, you know, um, how do you say? Uh, what's the English word? Advice. They also have with advice, things like that. And Unity, this is like, this is a big, big money that pours into Singularity Net and into AI right now, into a ASI Alliance right now. So this story is actually pretty, pretty great. Pretty bullish for us. So as we see down here, over 1 billion, over 1 billion USD in funding for beneficial AI and deep tech solutions for humanity. That's freaking amazing. As you can see here, Unity is a highly scalable capital venture studio and advisory ecosystem creating a new generation of mindful business aligned to a triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. So yeah, not much to read through here, but this is just huge. This um, collaboration by itself between Unity and Singularity Net, or now probably ASI Alliance, means a lot more money for a lot more compute, a lot more development, and also um, advisory on how to make actual working products that customers want to use, which is great. Now, Unity, I've looked through them. For example, they are also partnered with Ledger. Um, I know there was like a scandal with Ledger a few months ago. I still Ledger is a great product, and they definitely had a great, have a great product. 
great working product. So this is a great, great thing and a great announcement. Another announcement from Singularity Net, and let me find that here as well, is this right here. Uh, and I think this is kind of interesting, like maybe not amazing, uh, something like that, but I think this is pretty interesting, pretty cool, is here. Deep dive into the heart of innovation and discovery with the official trailer reveal of Sentience AI Lab, the latest addition to captivating the Fearverse AI project. And this is a game that comes out. And in this game, um, you basically play together with an AI bot with the Sophia model, and you basically play the game together and figure out, hey, what's, what's going on here? You basically do that together. Uh, and I think this is pretty interesting, pretty, pretty interesting concept. And when I look at the trailer, um, we can also go to there real quick. When I look at the trailer, it really looks very interesting. Now you let me know what you think about that, but I think it looks very interesting. Okay, um, I would like to watch the trailer actually with you, mm. or at least a few parts of the trailer. But I have to say, I have absolutely no idea <laughs> how, how to share the sound. If I just start, does it then play the sound? Um, let me see if I can do anything in my settings. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just try it and roll with it, I guess. All right? So let's. I remember. I remember. I remember. Yes. Can I hear that? I'll just hear that because I don't know. And we don't need to watch the whole trailer. I mean, I think it's pretty well made, but a few nice things I want to show you here. You also don't need to hear that if you cannot. Um, and for summer, anyway, um, let me go. There's the part that I want to show you. Oh, yeah, this here. This is quite nice. So, Sophia, so they, I basically just um, wakes up in that game and says, This what place. Is on? What is this place? Like, and now you just input text, right? There's no option. I mean, maybe there's an option that you can choose, but mainly you just input text here and basically talk with the AI. What do you mean? I'm aware I'm intelligent, obviously. But how did I get here? How did I get here? Now I can see you typing this into this, the bar here. So I don't know, this may be pre, um, preset, but this is you just type that in. And I think this is cool. I just logged into the game. I have no idea what's going on. I you this. logged in. So I think this is fascinating. I think this is pretty, pretty great concept that you basically just jump into that game with the AI together, and then you both try to figure out what the hell is, is going on here. I think that's pretty cool. That's a pretty pretty cool concept so yeah um i don't know what you guys think about that but i think this has a lot of potential now the graphics i think of course they are not great amazing high-end but i think they are pretty fitting i think they are pretty fitting for that game and also when i watch that and also with the sound i get a very very uh, my mysterious cool vibe when i look at that game all right, we don't need to watch more. Let's look at a few more scenes. Um, I mean, I don't have much time to play games and I haven't play, played games in a long time, but this uh, probably will get me at least testing it because this sounds just like a very, very interesting thing. ID indexed, in the, the time chain synced. Now, and you're basically the guardians. What is going on here together? Right? She keeps this door locked. Keeps this door locked. Why? She opens that door. And then you open that door at one point, and then she just runs run and it's on run. the run. Run. Yeah. end of the trailer. She runs. Uh, you can watch. I just post the trailer in the, in the chat here, so you can watch that as well. But yeah, enough of that game. I just think it's a pretty, pretty interesting concept. Uh, pretty cool, <laughs> and I really wanted to show that off here. All right, now let's look at the big thing of today, 
that's the big, big thing of today. Bitcoin is dumping, right? And we'll look at that just a little bit, and then we'll talk about what that maybe means for the merger, for the AFI alliance, uh, and, and all of that. Now, if you remember, last live, I talked about how I probably expect or how we maybe likely go back down into this monthly inefficiency here. And let me, does this is the time of the merger. I'll just um, delete that so we can see it better. And we are sitting right now just above this monthly inefficiency. So again, I have no idea what's going to happen. This is not financial advice. I'm just talking out of my own ignorance, right? Everything could happen. I have no clue, right? I'm just making a maybe a little bit of an educated guess here. But I this is not unexpected to see. Uh, I would fully expect us to go into this monthly inefficiency. Now, what are the scenarios that we maybe might see? Maybe we see a dump in here and a fast recovery and it just rips back up. Or maybe we see a dump all the way through here and then a few weeks or even months of sideways actions and then it rips back up. Or maybe we see a dump sideways, sideways action and then it goes back down, right? Might happen as well. Now, even if that happens, even if we dump, we see sideways action and we are entering actually the bear market already. I don't think so, but we might. Even if that happens, even if we dump go down here, we will still see a relief pump. We'll still see a relief pump. So we'll still see something like, um, where's my drawing tool? We'll still, still see, at the very least, see something like this with a small relief pump before we go back down. Now, the other thing that might happen is we just dip in here and then we rip back up, or we might go in here uh, and we maybe range even, range even down and then we, we rip back up. All this in the cards, uh, but yeah, again, this is not, not unexpected. We looked at the last halvings, what happened before the last halvings last week, last week, and we saw that uh, pullbacks from the high before the halving of about 20 to 40% are very normal. And if you see here right now, we have a pullback of 18%. So this is not unexpected. 20% would send us right to the top of this inefficiency. So this might be a likely scenario. Again, likely, I have no idea. We will see what happens. And 40% would send us through this inefficiency all the way down here. Also maybe going to happen. Now, what is this here? What did I mark off here? And now let's first go to this red line down here. This red line down here is our next monthly swing low. This is our next monthly swing low. So until we break this swing low down here, until we come down here, we are still in a monthly bullish, um, yeah, monthly bullish pattern, right? We are still bullish in the monthly because we have not made a lower low until we break this swing low, which is at 25,000, which is insane. But yeah, structurally speaking, until we break this swing low, we haven't made a lower low on the monthly time frame. Now, what is this line uh, a, fur a bit further up here? This red line, this is our next swing low on the weekly. Now, at least it was our next swing low on the weekly. We can see here that we had a swing low right here. And with this candle, we broke this weekly swing low. Um, now, we have not closed below this weekly swing low. So I wouldn't say we broke it just yet. I mean, technically, we broke it because we came lower. But we did not close below it. But when we close below it, we for sure broke this weekly swing low, um, which means we would be in a confirmed weekly downtrend. Right? Our next weekly swing low is down here. So if we break this weekly swing low down here, I maybe would slowly start to get worried. I maybe would slowly start to get worried. But also, when we look at the last halving, here's this blue line marks of our last halving. As you can see here, again, here's our top before the halving. And here's our bottom. And this is a pullback of 70%. That's absolutely insane. If we go with this one right before the halving to the bottom, we have a pullback of 60%, which is still absolutely crazy. Um, now, you could argue we can take, I mean, 
does I, for me it does make a whole lot of sense to take this one here this weekly candle but still this weekly candle is also a pullback of 20 percent right still a pullback of 20 percent so a 20 percent pullback right before the halving around the halving is completely normal it's not unexpected now when we had um, our run up before the halving halving we see that we had a uh, there's more, there's more line that we had swing lows down here. We had a swing low here. We also had swing lows up here, right? We had a swing low up here, a swing low there. There we had a swing low and we broke. We broke all of these swing lows. We come, came all the way down here on the weekly. And then we launched into the bull run, right? And in the bull run, we did not break any weekly swing lows. They're all intact here. Right, they're all, this one is also intact. Here we broke, this is our weekly swing low and here we broke it for the first time. We still came back up and made new all-time highs. So breaking a weekly swing low, while it's not great, before we are past the halving, I wouldn't put too much weight on it. And also in the bull run, it's still not the end of the world. Monthly swing lows, however, we want to see intact. When we break a monthly swing low, we are probably in trouble. So here was our monthly swing low. No, actually, here was our monthly swing low, and we never, ever broke that again, I believe. No, we never, ever broke that again. This was our monthly swing low before the bull market started. We never came back down here. This is at about 9,000, uh, about 9,500. Right? We never came back down here. Our next monthly swing low that we made was here. And once we broke that, the bear market basically was <laughs> in full play, right? And here's our monthly swing low here. I marked it, and we, we, I would not expect that we come back down to our monthly swing low from the bear market. Now it might happen, but I would not expect that to happen. If we come back down here and if we break it, we are in big trouble. If we break this, I get concerned. Uh, but if we break this, we are actually in big, big trouble. But until we are there, we still have a long way to go. First of all, let's see what happens right around this inefficiency. Good. Enough. <laughs> enough about Bitcoin. Enough about Bitcoin for now. Does it all make sense, guys? Was it helpful? Is that interesting? Do you care about this kind of stuff? Let me know. Let me know in the chat. <laughs> Talk with me. <laughs> Talk with me. Oh, by the way. By the way, shall I, I need to search for that right now because as some of you may know, um, a few days ago, I actually opened up members. I opened up memberships for, for this channel uh, and huge shout out to Christopher Henderson. Christopher Henderson is the very first member to join, join this channel. Shout out to you, man. Um, I will think about something special for you because you are the first member. Um, I'll think about something. Now with the memberships, uh, and we'll talk about the merger in just a moment. I just want to mention this here because, hey, this is my channel, so I can promote myself <laughs> a little bit, all right? Uh, unless you say, oh, fuck you, I don't want to hear this, then okay. But yeah, I think <laughs> it's fine if I promote myself a little bit. Uh, with the memberships, I have made the, the tiers AI, AGI, and, and ASI. The lowest tier AI, you basically get community posts, uh, private community posts, where I talk about a few crypto sometimes or AI projects, make a few analysis. Also this um, Bitcoin analysis that I've just shown you right here, I posted that briefly, I think yesterday or day, the day before in the, in the membership updates. With the AGI, the next highest tier, I will make a weekly member-only live stream where we can go really in depth into, into crypto, into coins, into levels, into what I'm looking at, into what to buy or sell maybe, of course, not financial advice. And with the last tier, AGI, um, I will open a, a exclusive chat group, right, where we can talk about, where we can talk about basically all day long uh, about trading, AI, uh, crypto, and all that good stuff. So that about the memberships. Good. But now let's let's talk about what this means for, for altcoins, because ASI, our token that we are all pumped and excited about, is an altcoin. Um, first of all, let us go to um, AGIX here. And I go to AGIX because I hold AGIX. It's my <laughs> favorite project of the three. Um, let's go to the 
to the actually let's go to the four hour. All right. Okay. So as we can see here, AGIX took quite of a huge dump. I mean, for this dump that, that happened today and started yesterday, kind of not, not that much of a huge dump. And if we go from the top, it's a 58% drawback, right? All the way down to 60 cents. But then we also recovered quite nicely at the high to 93 cents. And now we are sitting at 79 cents. So actually, in the last few day, days, not a lot changed. The, the dump today actually did not that, do that much. It did this here. 10% drawback, we are, but we are already recovering, right? And from the bottom here all the way to the high, we recovered 50%. So if you bought in, bought the dip, you just made a 50% profit uh, all the way up to the high. Of course, now you're sitting not there anymore, but right around a 30% profit, which is still pretty, pretty good. Um, Actually, I just saw that it was way too small for you to see. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I hope you still could see it. Now, altcoins always react way more um, crazily when Bitcoin. They always follow Bitcoin. They react to Bitcoin, but they react uh, in much, much higher, higher swings than Bitcoin does. Uh, they also recover much faster, as you see there. A 50% recovery within, I believe, 12 to 24 hours is, is freaking insane. It's great, right? But of course, if Bitcoin now dumps and goes into a bear market, uh, we will lose all our gains. <laughs> this is just what it is. We'll all dump all the way down there. Uh, and this is actually one thing that I want to talk about because um, with the ASI Alliance, I believe we have a huge, huge opportunity that in the next few years, um, I wouldn't say months just yet, but years, uh, we might decouple from Bitcoin. We might, hi Nani, hi there, great to see you. How are you doing? All right, we might decouple. So some of you have maybe seen this video that, that I posted a few days ago, why small language models are the next big thing. And I just want to talk about, not about small language models because I already made the video, but about a few things mentioned here, this. Some of them are a little better than GPT-4, but there's no quantum leap. I think everybody would say that GPT-4 is a quantum step ahead of GPT-3.5. There hasn't been any quantum leap in over a year. As the performance gap continues to close and more models demonstrate competitive results, it raises a question of whether LLMs are indeed starting to plateau, right? We see now um, Claude 3, which is basically even better than GPT-4. Inflection 2 is also great, or Inflection 2.5 is almost at the same level of GPT-4. We have the Gemini model, which is also pretty, pretty good. Um, there was another model, uh, I forgot the name, uh, from, from a smaller company, which is also almost as good as GPT-4. So it plateaus, it all closes in. Of course, we don't know what happens with GPT-5 this year. If I would need to guess, if I would need to make an educated guess about how GPT-5 will look like, I would guess it will be an incremental improvement. It will be the new best LLM, but just incrementally. And it will have a lot of interoperability. Like we have interoperability with image creation right now. We will likely also get interoperability with, with speech synthesis, maybe with music creation and also with video creation with Sora. This would be my uh, educated guess at how GPT-5 will look like. Um, maybe not, but this is what I would guess. So we see LLM slowly plateauing and not making huge moves anymore, which is potentially shifting the focus from simply increasing model size to exploring more efficient and specialized architectures. And this is where the ASI Alliance comes in and the Hyperon model, more efficient and specialized architectures. And another thing that I just loved was mentioned in this article is this statement down here. Additionally, the centralized nature of LLMs raises concerns about the concentration of power and control in the hands of a few large tech companies. And like an article on VentureBeats mentioning that it's extremely bullish for me when it comes to the ASI <laughs> Alliance. Um, because this is actually, um, this is the 
fundamental use case of what ASI is trying to do. Uh, it's trying to take all this amazing um, development of language large language models and AGI, AI, out of big tech's hands and put it into a democratized, democratized, dem democratized? <laughs> you know what I mean, a democratic process uh, open for everybody to use uh, and beneficial for everyone. And I love that it was mentioned in this article. But yeah, going back to, to this uh, statement again over here, um, potentially shifting the focus to more efficient and specialized architectures. This is Hyperon, right? This is Hyperon. Hyperon is a more specialized and efficient architecture. Well, it's not more specialized, but it's more efficient. Specialized is now the small language models, but Hyperon could combine many different small language models. I mean, this would also kind of defeat the purpose of a small language model, but also not really, because the purpose of Hyperon is that they all can communicate with one another and get the best out of one another. And just imagine, just imagine this future. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it is a possibility. And with this huge annou announcement of uh, huge capital money inflows into Singularity Net, the merger now fully going through, uh, and all of this great news around the ASI Alliance, I wouldn't say the possibility is at least not zero. I, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's good. It's definitely there that this, the following, is a possible future. Large language models plateauing, right? Incremental small improvements, but they are generally all the same, and they are plateauing. They maybe have more interoperability, but they don't get significantly better. And all the tech companies are basically in a, um, what you call it, one-way street, right? They cannot go, go any further. And they put all their development into LLMs. And um, very renowned, very renowned AGI um, scientists said a long time ago, uh, Jan LeCun, for example, that LLMs at the path to go to AGI don't lead anywhere, right? They are not the right path to AGI. And all the big tech companies have put money into the development of LLMs. Of course, they have a lot of money to put it into other things, but LLMs plateauing, not moving anywhere, big tech focusing on LLMs. And at the side, we have Hyperon. At the side, we have the ASI Alliance with their innovative approach where they integrate all the other approaches, the LLM, maybe different SLMs, then also a PLM, and then also creative approaches. They combine it all together and have a way more efficient and a way more innovative approach that actually reaches maybe even AGI at one point and maybe outperforms all the LLMs that have plateaued. Like it outperforms them because the issue with LLMs is that an LLM is only based on one thing on what is the most likely token in the sequence of tokens to come next? This is what an LLM is based on. What is the most likely token to come next in this sequence? The LLM has no real understanding of the world or a real understanding of what it is talking about. It's just making predictions based on the probability of what token is most likely to come next. That's what an LLM does. The AGI approach of Hyperon could have a real understanding of what the world is and what it's actually talking about when it's saying things. So like this, it could outperform LLMs in certain tasks like crazy, right? And this could be a possible future because LLMs are plateauing and Hyperon, when it launches, generates a few users, then goes out of alpha, goes into beta, generates more users, and then it actually becomes better than ChatGPT. Marketing takes care of itself because all the big YouTubers will talk about Hyperon and all the big tech influencers will talk about Hyperon because it's so much better than the plateauing language models and there will be a freaking huge inflow into the ASI token. <laughs> and this is, if this happens, I am pretty certain we'll see a decoupling of ASI and Bitcoin. And ASI will just go parabolic, will go bananas, <laughs> as you all know. So yeah, this might be a possible future. And this might be where we see an actual decoupling from one crypto project from the crypto market. Because for now, everything follows Bitcoin. 
But if the ASI Alliance manages to pull this off, I'm pretty confident that we can see a decoupling because we have an actual fundamental use case. This is what I am talking about the whole time. Most crypto projects don't really have any fundamental use case. Sure, they have kind of a fundamental use case, but again, my example is always, just because with Ethereum you can buy an NFT is not a fundamental use case, right? You can send an NFT and this is just interesting for people who are already in crypto. But having an amazing chatbot, an amazing AGI approach like this, that's a fundamental use case um, like nothing else. And if you don't see a decoupling there, I don't know where you see a decoupling. So yeah, I'm very, very excited about that. But again, always tread with caution here. This is by far not guaranteed to happen. It's a potential future. You always want to keep in mind that for now, we have not even seen the alpha of Hyperon or anything really from the ASI Alliance, right? I am excited. I love the team. We all are, but still don't just follow blindly. Also look at what they're actually doing, okay? Always uh, think about everything critically, especially about the things that you are excited about because there are your blind spots. And now let me look into the chat. Many saying that merger is not necessary since ASI deals with doing languages and programs rather than GP, GPU computing. Um, yeah, I'm not, not sure what exactly, you, ex, ex, exactly you're referring to. Now, first of all, of course, we have the computing and the GPU um, now all combined from the different, different partners, from Fetch, from Ocean, and now from AGIX. Uh, second of all, uh, the second proposal of AGIX that also was confirmed by the community was a release of, I believe, 100,000 AGIX tokens or something like that. This is specifically get going, uh, getting deployed to um, buy more GPU and more processing power. They're already in context with, with big mining farms to also gain processing power there. So that's amazing. And thirdly, we just had the big Unity announcement that I just talked about. The um, Unity um, announcement that uh, AGIX and uh, Singularity Net and Unity will be working together, which opens up also a lot of money for a lot more GPU and compute for the merger. So I think a lot is done in that regard because obviously Ben Goertzel and the others are very aware that they need compute in order to pull all of this off properly. So I see good, good developments in that, uh, in that regard. Um, obviously nothing is fixed yet, right? The vote was gone through. So the tokens will be released to buy more GPU, to buy more compute. Um, but it has not been bought yet. The, the um, how you, what do you say? The partnership between uh, Unity and Singularity Net is just announced. Nothing has been bought yet, but I would assume that a lot of that is getting used to, um, to get more compute and GPU processing power. Is it done with the merger to ASI? <laughs> it's, it's what done with the merger to ASI? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not specifically sure what you are referring to with, with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yes, it is done with the merger to ASI. Now, when you mean, can you already buy the ASI token? No, the, the merger is confirmed, the merger will happen. Yes, the community said, yes, it's going to happen, but it has not happened yet, right? The merger, the actual merger contracts will go live at the end of April or in the beginning of May. Don't get scammed, it's not live yet. You cannot get the ASI token yet. It does not exist yet. It's going to happen relatively soon, but not yet. So always stay updated when it comes to that. And again, if you're new to crypto, if you um, are unsure, how to manage your own wallet, what a seed phrase is. If you don't know the phrase, not your keys, not your crypto. If you are sometimes afraid that you maybe may uh, lose all your tokens, that you make a failed transaction, that you uh, don't know how to use MetaMask properly, or maybe you uh, don't know how to properly interact with the markets. You don't know when to buy, when to sell, when to take profits, not financial advice, of course. And maybe you uh, are very afraid of getting scammed. You don't know properly how to protect yourself against scammers. You don't know what you can do, what measures you should take. I just released a video course. Well, it's a 40 minute, 40 minutes about where I talk about all of this for beginners. I highly recommend you go through that if this is you. 
um, you can find it in the video description. It's it's called um, Crypto Beginners Video Course. So uh, I recommend you go there if you're new. Or if you want to be on my email list, because obviously you will get on my email list. If you don't want that, you can obviously opt out at any time. But I promise I will just send emails that are beneficial. I don't send many emails and just emails that are beneficial for, for everybody. Um, I believe are beneficial for everybody. Where did you learn such good English to speak? Why, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you a lot. Um, I am always thinking that it's amazing that you sit through hours and hours of my German accent. <laughs> but thank you. Um, thank you a lot for that. Uh, well, I was uh, in school. Uh, I learned at least to understand a lot in school. Then for myself, I just watch everything and read everything in English because I already know how to talk German. So I might as well see and read everything in English. So I train it. And then I also was for one year work and travel in New Zealand. Uh, and I have to say, sorry for all the other native speakers, but New Zealand English is just the, the best English. It just sounds the best. I love New Zealand English. But yeah, in the, wor wor uh, in the year of work and travel in New Zealand, I really learned how to speak. Um, before I could listen and understand, but you know, when you just listen and understand, speaking is still uh, a bit different. And then also everything I do, um, I also do coaching. Right, uh, mental health coaching, all of that is just in English. So I just also talk with all of my clients only in English. How long will the ASI integration take for the price to go parabolic? <laughs> well, uh, uh, let me let me ask my crystal ball here, right? No, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not making fun of you, but I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. Maybe the price will not go parabolic. This is something we also need to consider. Maybe the price will not go parabolic and will just stay sideways, lame, and do nothing. Especially if Bitcoin crashes right now. Okay, as bullish as all of this is, but if Bitcoin actually crashes right now to, let's say, 40K, the ASI token will crash as well. Again, there might be decoupling if and when Hyperon gets released and is actually any good, but we are still not there, and we are still a few months or even years from that happening. So in the long term, wow, amazing. In the short term, it will follow Bitcoin, okay? It will follow Bitcoin just like all the other markets do. Maybe this merger and when the contract is actually live gives the token a pump because people want to get, get in it, maybe. Um, but I don't know. We'll need to see. We'll need to see how that actually then looks like. But in saying that, I would say, uh, again, not financial advice. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just talking out of my own ignorance, yada, yada, yada. Um, but DCAing into the ASI token once it's out is probably never a bad idea, I would say. And this is also what I will do. So I can tell you what I am doing, right? This is what I will do. Um, and if you want to know my exact strategy, uh, get the, the course that I just talked about in the description down below. A crypto beginners course that I talk about my exact strategy um, how I interact with the markets, if that's interesting for you. <laughs> All right, good. Any more questions about the merger, about what's happening there, about what's going on there? Can I get a few, a few um, thumbs up or one hundreds or like this, this party emoji in the chat? Hey, the merger! Yes, amazing! Yeah, let's. Let's, you know, part A, where merger is, is confirmed. We are all freaking pumped and hyped about that, aren't we? I definitely am. Mm, again, this could be the this could be the birth of the biggest crypto fundamentally since Bitcoin. So I am freaking, freaking excited about that. All right. Now let's go into another story here about Adobe and we'll talk about how that relates to blockchain as well in just a moment because I think there we see a very good use case for blockchain when we see an issue right there. But first of all, let's go into this article um, that basically talks about that Adobe plans to add AI video generators, Sora, OneWay and Pika Labs to Premiere Pro, um, which is pretty amazing. So. Today, um, I believe it was yesterday, so yeah, a, a, a day ago or something like that, Adobe announced it aims to update Premiere Pro to add plugins to emerging third-party AI video generator models, including OpenAI Sora and rivals Runaway MLS Gen 2 and Pika 1.0. 
Um, so it positions the company as a source of trusted AI tools and products. Uh, we'll go into the Firefly stuff in just a moment, but this is um, Adobe really setting up to become a very, very big player in the whole AI space with their, with their, with their models. So I believe this is huge what Adobe is doing here. Uh, and Adobe is definitely seeing the signs of time going, not fighting against it, but going with it and setting themselves up to become a huge, huge player uh, in the field of generative AI. Um, and they also uh, integrate their own Firefly model, but Adobe, again, this is just announced that they plan to do that. Fire, um, uh, Sora is not even out yet. Um, nothing is fixed yet. They just plan to do that. This is all they are saying. Uh, but for me, it really shows where Adobe is going and that they really um, go with the time. And I believe they have the right, the right idea about what they are doing. So as I was saying here, they also plan a Firefly text to image generator model will be coming to Premiere Pro with generative extent, which lets video editors and filmmakers seamlessly add frames to make clips longer. Firefly for video will also ensure Premiere Pro users can perform intelligent object detection and removal. And finally, Firefly for video will also ship with a text to video image generator, which is huge. So Adobe is basically building their own amazing video, AI video tool, and they're also planning to have plugins for all the other tools. Pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. Now, um, yeah, up here, a few caveats here, obviously, no timetable has been set for when Adobe would integrate these third-party AI video generators into Premiere Pro, and the details don't seem fully ironed out quite yet. For now, it just seems, well, an announcement. We want to do that, but no real details. Especially since many of these third-party tools require paid subscriptions after a few initial preview video generations, or in the case of Sora, are not even publicly available. So yes, great idea, sounds amazing, uh, but there are no details and it sounds like a little bit of a um, hype article that has no fundamental details yet, but it still sounds pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. But now the thing that I really want to talk about is um, down here. The trained on data uh, it owns or has licensed, has rights to use such as Adobe stock image contributor content to the charging of some Adobe stock photographers and artists. And this is where we want to get into now, because this is um, where also I believe blockchain could be an amazing future use case. So if we go over here, and I believe most of you have, have heard about this. So um, Adobe stock creators aren't happy with Firefly, the company's commercially safe gen AI tool, because it basically used their art without asking them. So Adobe trained Firefly on their stock images without express notification or consent. No notification, no consent. So they say they're using our IP to create content that will compete with us in the marketplace, he said. Even though they may legally be able to do that because we are all signed the terms of service, I don't think it is either ethical or fair. He said he didn't receive any notice that Adobe was training an AI model. I don't recall receiving an email or notification that said things are changing and that they would be updating the terms of service, he said. The ethical thing to do would have been to pre-notify the Adobe stock artists about the Firefly AI training and offer them an opt-out option right from the beginning. And I tend to agree with that, that that would be the ethical thing to do for sure. But we also want to look at the other side, and I found this sentence quite interesting. As I understand it, they are saying we are fine with the stock images being used for someone to buy an, and iterate on in Photoshop. But if it's used as a data set for generative AI, somehow there's an issue and we are being ripped off. Right. This is a bit of a double-edged sword there because, hey, you can use it in Photoshop for whatever you want and do with it whatever you want, but not for the AI model. Still, it's Adobe, the company, uh, and there should have been a notification and an option to opt out. I believe also this would have been the fair and ethical thing to do. Now, still Adobe, uh, I would say this is mainly just a marketing stunt, but they are trying. Still, they are trying, and I give them that, as you can see here. Adobe remains committed 
to compensating creators. As Firefly is in beta, we will provide more specific on creator compensations once these offerings are generally available. Now, I believe they're already out, but I have not found a lot about them. There are compensations for people whose images have been used to train, but I don't know how huge they are or what actually is happening. And what I really want to talk about, and after that, I address the chat again, but what I really want to talk about is how blockchain could solve this issue that is happening right now. How could blockchain solve that? Think about that yourself for a second. And if you have not seen my video about Industry 4.0, how blockchain and AI leading Industry 4.0, you maybe want to watch that because there I talk about it as well. Now, imagine all of these images that have been created would have been on the blockchain as NFTs or whatever. Like, they don't need to be worth millions of dollars or like have huge transaction costs, stuff like that, but simply as an NFT, which means, hey, yes, ownership belongs to this person. That's all what an NFT says. Yes, ownership belongs to this person. If now someone trains a model with these images, you can always see where the image comes from. So you can always pay royalties to that person. Now, even if Adobe themselves doesn't pay any royalties, let's say they train a model on these images that they have in their stock library. And you can always follow where this image comes from. And then the model is used to generate another image. And this image is then sold. You know what can happen because you can follow how this image has been generated. You can split up and see how much percentage of what image was used to generate the new image. And like this, you could make a kickback or royalty for the original creator. Of course, most of the time, this will be mere cent or not even cents. But still, overall, with the huge use of these AI-generated images, I believe there still would be a reasonably kickback for the original creators of the image. And this would be possible with blockchain because you could see where does the image come from, how much of the, of the percentage of that image is used for this newly generated image. And then when this newly generated image is sold somewhere, the original creator of the original image gets a small kickback. I think that's an amazing use case for blockchain. Right? What are your thoughts about that? I believe we would, wouldn't have this whole discussion, we wouldn't have this whole issue if all of this would be on a blockchain because you can always see where an image comes from and who owns the image, where the image originated. So I believe blockchain really um, would solve this issue. And I believe with Hyperon, uh, and if Hyperon puts out, or the ASI Alliance puts out an image generator, this could be the first step into that direction. What do you think about that? Let me know. All right. Good. Now let me look into the chat again. What exactly is decentralized with ASI governance? Um, with ASI governance, uh, I'm not sure what you mean with, with the question there. Now, you have obviously the different um, governance councils, right, from every project. The ASI Alliance has now their own governance council. I believe with Ben, ben Gertler, CEO, and the other leaders of the other projects also in that governance council. And this governance council um, is basically just there to legally represent the ASI Alliance, who actually is in charge of what happens with the ASI tokens uh, and with everything is the community are the people who hold the tokens. You have seen that with the vote, right? The community voted on the merger. The community of Patch voted, yes, the merger is going to happen. The community of AGIX voted, yes, the merger is going to happen. This is a decentralization, a huge decentralization, a part of the decentralization of the governance of the token and everything that's going to happen there. They all voted yes. If they would have voted no, the, the merger would not have happened, right? It's in the hands of the community that the decentralized governance. Thanks, man. You're one of the few, if not the only one, um, covering this topic. Much appreciated your work. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Really happy. Uh, really happy I can bring this information to you. Because this is the most exciting topic for me in, in the last decade, maybe. Uh, at least since, since I'm uh, making YouTube videos. So I'm for sure covering all of it. Is there any possibility for some more companies collaborate with SingularityNet? Oh, yes, for sure. There are. Um, actually, let me find 
Um, uh, I don't need to search for that, but there are huge collaborations. So as I just said, Unity is collaborating with Singularity Net. So this is huge institutional money for, for the ASI Alliance for Singularity Net, huge institutional money probably for GPUs. And there are also smaller collaborations all the time. The last one that I have seen is that um, Singularity Net is also collaborating with the decentralized exchange on Cardano. So another smaller collaboration. Uh, and there are possibilities for a lot more collaborations and you see collaborations uh, basically everywhere. Especially now that the ASI uh, mergers confirmed, I would assume that even more collaborations will happen because everybody wants to get in on, on the boat, right? And not let it sail without them. So yeah, I definitely think so. And we already see it. When will the ASI coin go live? Thank you for the stream. Thank you, Philip. And most welcome, most welcome. And the ASI con will go live at the end of April or in the beginning of May. We don't know an exact date yet. I will for sure let you know as soon as we know a date. For now, uh, we know in a few weeks. The statement was in a few weeks. So at the end of April, in the beginning of, beginning of May. Um, that's, that's all we know for now. Um, all right. Good. Then. I believe that's all I have for today. 36 people watching. My God, let me know all of your questions down below. I am here as long as you have questions. 38 people even. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here, for sitting through my sick German accent, <laughs> listening to me, uh, and being here with me. Thank you for spending your time with me. I'm highly, highly appreciative of all of you. Really, it's amazing to see this live stream grow. grow. It's amazing to interact with all of you here. And I'm extremely happy, extremely, extremely happy that, yeah, more and more people starting to join this community and spend time with me. That's what I'm really happy, most happy about, actually. All right. Good. Any more questions? Uh, let me know your questions down below. Anything else you want me to talk about? Maybe you we will just have another look at Bitcoin in just a moment. I just subscribed your channel's excellence. Thank you a lot. Thank you a lot, uh, Michael or Michael? I'm pronouncing German, Michael, pronouncing uh, English, Michael. Thank you a lot for that. Now, um, again, I'll just uh, plug myself in a little bit. Uh, I just opened up memberships for this channel. The memberships are three categories. We have AI, AGI, and ASI. AI gets um, a few like extra emojis and stuff like that. And they also get community posts, private community posts, where I go deeper into specific crypto projects and coins. Now, I will not do that these kind of deep dives, maybe sometimes on the streams uh, and just generally, but not that often. Um, because again, I am not a financial advisor. I don't like to speculate about crypto price and I don't want to be responsible for you investing your money because if you are responsible for your money, right? I don't want to be responsible for you winning. I don't want to be, especially don't want to be responsible for you losing. So that's why I don't like to do it. But I will talk more in depth about that in the community post for the AI member level. The AGI member level will get a weekly live stream where we go in depth into coins, uh, maybe into crypto projects, maybe also into trading or into whatever you want to go in depth about. And the AGI member level um, will get an exclusive chat group with me where we can talk about the stuff all day long. All right. Good. Thank you. Most welcome. Most welcome, my friend. And then again, at the end, I said it a few times, if you're a beginner, if you want to protect yourself against scams, if you don't know how to interact with the market, if you want to learn my strategy, how I interact with the market, how I buy into the market, um, you maybe want to check out the crypto beginners course that I have newly made and you can find it in the description down below. It's probably the right thing for you. Just subscribe, thank you. Most welcome and thank you. Thank you for your subscription and shout out to you, Brennan. Shout out to you, Michael. Happy to have you in my community. I will, if you don't have any more questions, I will see all of you next week, Wednesday again. Same place, same time at, what is that? Um, that's 7 p.m. CET and I believe 1 p.m. American time. East, Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. EST, something like that. And Maybe I'll also do a live stream on the weekends. Let's see. Maybe I'll do two live streams because, I mean, it's going well. You are here. I love to interact with you. I love to talk with you. Uh, you seem to enjoy my content. So, yeah, maybe I'll do two live streams a week. Um, but uh, unless I announce it on my community wall or somewhere, we'll talk each other. We'll see each other next week, Wednesday. 
when will they merge to ASI? I get that question a lot. Now the merge to ASI, we don't know yet. This is the last time I'll say it and then I'm out. We don't know when the merge is going to happen. It's going to happen in a few weeks. So probably at the end of April, in the beginning of May, I will let you know as soon as we know, okay? Other than that, follow the official channels and I'll see you all on Wednesday. Have a great rest of your day. And again, thank you for hanging out here with me and spending your time with me. See you guys.